Hi everyone, Reese here again, and hopefully I have something quite interesting for you today. So you're probably already familiar with this, which is Atari's 1976 home Pong machine, of course, based on their arcade game of the same name. You're probably also familiar with this, which is the 2600 VCS, Atari's first cartridge-based home console. What you may not be aware of, though, is this. An electronic handheld game based on a 1974 arcade game by Atari called Touch Me. Atari's Touch Me arcade machine was actually quite an interesting beast. It didn't have a joystick, it didn't have a screen, it essentially just had four buttons. It lit up in certain patterns and players essentially had to memorise the patterns and press the buttons uh, in the same order, of course. Now, that probably sounds quite familiar to you in the form of Milton Bradley's Simon. The reason being that uh, Atari actually licensed the rights to the game to Milton Bradley to release a home version. They weren't interested in making their own home version at the time. I think they were probably tied up with the development of their Pong machines and the upcoming VCS. However, after seeing the success of Simon, I think Atari wanted in on that and decided to release this, which was their own version of Milton Bradley's version of their arcade game, um, if you're still following along. So much like Simon, Touch Me has lights, it has buttons, it lights up in a particular order. Um, obviously the packaging isn't quite as quite as clever and quite as pretty, which is, is a bit strange, uh, but it does have this LCD screen on it, which shows your score and uh, various other things relating to whichever current game mode you're using. So we'll just have a look at the box. It's quite an interesting thing. It uh, has this flappy open part here. As you can see, three games in one of computerized fun. Repeat my lights and sounds, watch out, three misses and you're out, so on and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to make like it's Christmas 1978, we're going to unbox this thing, have a look what's in here, have a look at how it works, and uh, see what we think. Obviously I've already read part of the text on the front of the box. Not too much interesting of note to be honest, obviously it doesn't have a barcode on it because when this was released barcodes weren't even invented yet. But it's, it's quite bright, quite colourful, fits in with Atari's um, you know, very nice 1970s era branding, which I'm, I'm personally a big fan of. So, to extract the thing from its box, we open this flap, and the top opens like so, and the inside slides out. This thing's uh, over 40 years old now, so the box is probably not as crisp and shiny as it was in 1978, but still it's all here. We have the game unit itself, uh, which we'll get to shortly. But first let's have a quick look at the instructions. So the Touch Me instruction manual. There's not really much to it to be honest, uh, just a fold out leaflet type affair. Just explains the different game modes. I don't know if we'll go through all of them, we'll see uh, see how the mood takes us. I think from memory they're all pretty similar anyway. So just back onto the actual handheld itself. Obviously it's a delightful shade of 1970s orange. Bear in mind this thing predates the Game Boy or pretty much every other handheld um, in existence actually. You know, it's, it's quite a nice compact little thing. Obviously there's not much to it electronically. And we'll just turn it around to the back. Here we have the battery compartment and uh, just some instructions on the back there as well. So let's uh, put a nine volt battery in and see what happens. Doo, doo, doo. So as per Atari's 2600 VCS, we have some quite nice chunky power switches on here takes a second to come on but as you can see the uh, LCD screen is illuminated there. And we have the slider here so we can choose from the three game modes. Start, last, high and skill buttons and uh, the main sort of play area here. First up I think we'll have another look at this manual. There's obviously not much to it like I said but uh, still some quite interesting information in here. First thing that I hadn't noticed before was the battery and power supply section. Apparently this thing can take an external power supply, which is known as the battery eliminator, much the same as the Pong battery eliminator. Um, I'm not quite sure 
how much Atari expected people to play with this thing, but obviously they thought it warranted an external power supply. From my own experience, it actually lasts quite a long time on, on a single 9 volt battery. Still, it's, a, it's quite a good option. It's a good of them to provide that. The manual goes into the three different game modes. They're pretty much much of a muchness. There's not really much to them. The first one being the standard Simon remember and repeat after me type game mode. The second one, you add your own buttons to the end of each sequence and you have to remember your own sequence essentially. Third mode is, is a multiplayer only mode, so I, I probably won't be testing that now. Just a case of uh, multiple players and you get uh, eliminated if you can't can't remember the sequence and moves on to the next player. Although that said, it doesn't look like this thing really keeps track of keeps track of who's playing and, and anything else and it's kind of up to the players to, to sort that out between themselves. So let's have a look at some gameplay. So if we just switch this thing on using the uh, slider here, we can see the LCD displays lit up there. It's a very early 1970s LCD technology, but it's still quite clear. And we have four buttons across the top here. Start, last, high and skill. Last and high are actually quite interesting because they are high scores essentially. So you can see the score from the last round played and you can see the high score uh, since the machine was turned on. It doesn't save scores unfortunately when it's turned off. So what we do is we press start and it will start cycling through these numbers. And these numbers are essentially the different skill levels. So for eight, you'll have to remember a sequence of eight lights, um, 16, 32, and 99. If you can remember a whole sequence of 99 of these, then you're uh, much, much smarter than me. So I think we'll go for eight. I'll just wait for it to come back around. Press the skill button. So that's skill level eight selected. So now we just press start and uh, it will start cycling through. So we have five seconds to basically uh, press each button or it will time out and it will be the end of the game. So let's go. Okay, and it didn't register that button press. Oh well. And there we go. So that's just a quick game on the easiest skill level. Failed there because the uh, buttons aren't particularly responsive. I mean, they are 40 years old, so I guess we can't really blame them. I'll probably strip this thing down at some po point and see if I can uh, see if I can improve those a bit. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at the second game mode. So in game mode number two, it's essentially up to the player to determine their own sequence. Sounds relatively simple. I suppose you could just cheat and keep pressing the same button over and over again uh, but that probably wouldn't be very fun so we'll give it a go same as last time we press the start button sorry and it starts cycling through the skill levels we'll go with eight again because just for a, a quick demo and uh, it will give us the first color and then it's up to us to decide where we want to go from there so let's go Okay, apparently I did something wrong there. Um, let's try again. Ah. Okay, apparently I've uh, completely misunderstood how that game's supposed to work, so... Uh, <laughs> I'll have a look at it and uh, we'll try again, shall we? Now I've read the manual for this second game mode and I've uh, had a couple of plays through. Still can't say that I entirely understand it, but I think we'll give it a go. If I can't get it to work properly, I think we'll just have to move on. Perhaps someone in the comments has, has one of these or has played this before and knows a bit more about it than I do. I'd definitely be interested in hearing how it's supposed to work, but we'll give it a go and see how far we get.
Nope, no idea. Oh well. As the third game mode is an elimination mode designed for multiple players, I won't be testing it now. Essentially it's exactly the same as the first game, um, but when you're out, you're out. Until obviously one person either finishes the whole game or uh, or they're the last person standing, so I think that's, that's fairly self-explanatory. So as we've just seen, quite a fun little game here. I think if I was a kid receiving this for Christmas in 1978, back before computers and mobile phones and, uh, you know, back in the day when there were only three channels on TV and we had to walk 25 miles each way uphill to get to school and all of that stuff. Yeah, it probably would have kept me amused probably most of Christmas Day. Distracted me from the relatives. Probably would have gone straight back in the box and then sat in an attic for 40 years and then ended up on eBay. Which incidentally is how I got hold of this one. So thanks for watching. If you like that and you're particularly interested in my Atari stuff and want to see some more reviews and some more more of my ramblings, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.